Well, thank you very much and welcome everyone to another session of the ASPE Speaker Series. My name is Russell Mason, the Vice President of ASPE and your MC for tonight. Uh, just a few things to start off with. I'd like to ask everyone to keep their devices set to mute during tonight's presentation. And as per previous session, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into your chat function on your Zoom screen. Our president, Susie B, will pose your questions as we go. We'll try something different tonight. And tonight's guest speaker, we have Melbourne-based photographer, Jesse Marlow. Jesse's work has been held in many private and public collections, including the National Gallery of Victoria, Monash Gallery of Art, Parliament House, Canberra, and the State Library of Victoria collections. He's the winner of the London Street Photography Festival's International Street Photography Award and the NGA, NGA's Founders Photography Prize. Jesse's work has been exhibited worldwide and has had many solo exhibitions, produced three books and contributed to dozens more publications. If you haven't heard of him, you must have been living under a rock for many years. So, <laughs> enough said. So on behalf of the ASPE committee, I would like to welcome all members and guests to tonight's presentation titled A Conversation with Jesse Marlow. It's over to you, Sue and Jesse. Great. Thanks so much, Russ. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much, Jesse, for joining us tonight. It's awesome to have you presenting. Pleasure. Um, so, yeah, we'll get uh, straight into it. So, um, first of all, I guess um, I met you four years ago when I did a street photography workshop, not really knowing what street photography was back in 2016. And um, I guess you've been a great inspiration for my entry into street photography. Um, what have been your inspirations and how did you get started into street? Yeah, so I, um, <clears throat> my first, um, my first, I suppose the first time I picked up a camera was when I was a little boy. I was, um, I was given a, uh, a photographer, well, it was a, a book of photos called Subway Art, which was a, a book about the New York um, graffiti scene. And um, it was a book that sort of, you know, profiled the, the sort of the subway art from sort of the late 70s into the, the early 80s. And, and that um, it was a present from my uncle and that just triggered something in me. And so um, from that point on, I kind of just started taking pictures and you can see here, this is the, the first picture, one of the first pictures I ever took. This was a, well, I'd sort of go out on weekends and school holidays and, and you know, my mum and dad would drive me around and I'd, um, you know, find walls like this and shoot through barbed wire and, and, and stuff like this to, to get this sort of pictures like this. And I, um, I did this, for, for 10 years and then I um this is another one from that that period I think this is probably like 1986 and I think I'm like eight years old and you know there's compositions terrible as you'd expect from an eight-year-old and um and then I sort of continued doing this throughout my teenage years and then I went off to um I went off to high school and I wanted to study graphics graphic design and I took this photo from a train in London and then this I think when I sort of got this negative uh, this slide back and I saw this picture it, it kind of triggered something again in me and I suppose from that point on I've just been um you know taking canned street pictures and so I went off to um I went off to photography school I, I um I missed out on the graphic design courses and I, I went and studied at a TAFE course here in Melbourne and I had a photography teacher who was super inspiring and he um, Penny might remember him. Um, is a guy called Ray Zund. He's a Melbourne photographer, and you know this was the the first book he showed us as as students. And it was you know Cardi Brisson, Alex Webb. Um, I remember seeing this picture in particular and sitting in in you know I think it was the second week of of class in the first year and just seeing this picture and being blown away by the the composition, the color, and the moment, and then just you know wanting to kind of get out into the world and take photos like this. So. I suppose the early inspiration came from from photographers like Alex Webb and Kadelka, and you know I was going through um, their work again last night, and just sort of still, you know, 25 years later, I'm still you know picking up their books and 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 being inspired. So this book was quite crucial um, to my I suppose development as a photographer. I was shooting a lot of black and white back then, and um, you know photos like this, and when I I was at photography school the teacher he, he started this thing where we'd, we'd go out from from class every Wednesday and he'd, he'd call it the river walk or city walk 
And it was, you know, us as a group just going into the city and roaming around for the afternoon and just, you know, shooting 10 rolls of film and just, just learning to kind of, you know, position yourself and, and kind of get into situations that, that weren't normal for young photographers. And I think, you know, I think that was really, I suppose, you know, crucial to, to my development. And then we, um, you know, we started kind of going off to protests and stuff like this. And this is, I think, where I suppose the, you know, it's something that doesn't really come naturally to a lot of people and, you know, being out in public with the camera in front of other people. So it does take, um, it takes, you know, a lot of practice to do it. So going off to those protests and those public events uh, were really, I think, you know, crucial to my, my development as a photographer. So that's where it's, you know, it's pretty much still what I'm doing 20 odd years or 25 years later. So, um, yeah, looking back at, at, you know, where it all started, I think that, that that teacher that, you know, pushed us out into the city and said, just go for it was, was re yeah, really crucial. Um, so I'll just go through some work. I'm just gonna, so the first body of work that I shot, I'm just gonna kind of go through a few different bodies of work and then lead into to what, I'm, um, what I've been shooting recently. And, and, you know, in particular, the last sort of six months here in Melbourne, which has been pretty hard. So. This first body of work was a black and white series that I shot, um, yeah, from that period when I was at photography school, going into the city, catching a train in and sitting on the steps of, of Flinders Street and just watching people kind of move in and around the station. So this, um, I'll just go through some of these. This is uh, a photo that, looking back at it, it was, it was one of those sort of just bizarre moments you come across that, you know, it's, you could stand at that set of traffic lights at Flinders Street every day for the next 20 years and, and not sort of see something like this again. So it was just a, one of those moments that, you know, when it presents itself, you sort of just, you know, you just have to sort of take off and, and follow it and see where it leads you. And for me, it was this, um, it turned out it was this artist who was walking this big painting of his that had been in the, the Archibald Prize um, back to his studio. And I think I followed him for maybe two blocks in the city and just shot continuously as he, walked through it so, so, so back in the film days then just yeah yeah so this is all all of this all of the work that you that I'm showing tonight except for the last probably the last body of work which I'll get to in a little bit is all film so back at photography school we um and Penny might remember this as well we had a one of the, the sort of selling points of the photography course that I went to was unlimited film so um <laughs> essentially you know we'd kind of go in as, as students and kind of you know we used to take lunch boxes in and, and bags and just bulk roll you know 100, 100 rolls at a time and um it was yeah it was one of those one of those things that i think after you know a few years of a few of us doing that they they changed the um they changed it to sort of i think five rolls a week or something but um yeah it was sort of just a you know became a an, an obsession that you know we would just load up on film and and go off to the city and and go for it so um yeah all the work is 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 film up until the later stuff so i'll just um i'll go through a few of these this was a so this this is probably one of the one of the the photos from that that early period that i um you know i'm sitting on the steps of flinders street and i'm just i'm using this guy's leg to the the, the right of the, the frame just to kind of shield myself. So I was still, I was still kind of getting the, the hang of kind of using different things to potentially, you know, disguise myself while being out on the street. And, and um, you know, it's just one of those nice moments that, that, that just happened at, the, at Flinders Street. So I, um, you know, I, I, I don't engage with anyone in the photos. I, I prefer to kind of, I prefer to miss the photo than to, um, you know, potentially miss this and then, go up and say you know I just saw you guys doing this could you do it again so I could take a picture so for me it's it's always um it's always sort of try and capture the moment as it happens and and that's sort of been one of my uh, sort of I suppose things I've stuck with with my work I, I don't I rarely engage and I, I never sort of set things up so there are a couple of the, the constants um <clears throat> so I've just been one of the um, the good things of lockdown, not that there's been that many, but one of the um, the good things down here is I've been going through older work and um, 
So this is all stuff that was shot from, I think, 98 to 2004. And I've, I'm now in the, the sort of the final stages of, of publishing it as a book. Uh, so I'll be releasing that at the end of the year, I think for early release next year. So this has been one of the, for me, one of the, the, the personal sort of uh, good things of, of COVID just to sort of go back through older work and, and, and find a series that I had sitting there and, and kind of turn it into a book. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd, I just thought I'd just mention that. And, um, and this is, yeah, I suppose this picture here is a bit different to some of the other ones in that, you know, it's obviously a portrait, it's a street portrait. Uh, you can't just sort of, you know, roll up and take this candidly. I've obviously had a chat to him and just said, you know, I'm going to take your portrait. He's had a little sandwich, he's moved the sandwich and then just put his hands together and I took this, this picture and then that was it. So that's kind of the level of probably, you know, I could probably count on, you know, one hand, how many pictures are in, in my sort of bodies of work where there's been that, that interaction with people. And this is, this is one of them. This one here, this is a, an early one. And I always look back at this picture and it was one of the, I think I took it in 99 and it was one of those photos where I was still kind of getting the, the hang of kind of moving into someone's space with the camera and, and, and shooting candidly and not disrupting that, that moment that you'd first been drawn to. And, um, I think from memory, I, you know, I saw these two guys from a fair distance away and kind of quickly crossed the road to, to get closer to them, to, to then try and capture it. And then, you know, you sort of then move into the scene quite gradually. You don't want to sort of go in too hard and, and kind of, you know, lose that moment that, that you've been drawn to. So for me, I'm sort of standing there and pretending to shoot the building and then just quickly bring the camera down to eye level to, to try and get that, that symmetry and, and that moment. So. There are a few of the little tricks that I've kind of used over the years, just the old, you know, shoot, pretend to shoot the building trick, which I'm sure everyone else has, uh, has used in as well. Um, so I'll just go through a couple of these. If there's any questions, just kind of yell out as we're, as we're going. Um, so all the early work was, was black and white. It was, it was what was available at, um, at photography school. And I think I kind of stuck with that black black and white work for probably, I think it was probably seven years. I think I'm one of those photographers that likes to, when I, you know, when I start a project, I like to sort of stick with, you know, a film or a camera or a lens and continue it through a body of work and not kind of chop and change. And I think that that's a really important thing. And you see that with, you know, a lot of photographers work that that visual consistency. So I think it, for me, it probably started back back at photography school and, and, and having that teacher that was really inspiring and, and sort of pushed us out there and sort of gave us that direction that I think is really crucial when starting off. Yeah. Um, so this, this is the, the kind of the next body of work I did, which was a, um, was a series that I spent two years shooting and I, um, I hurt my arm and, and saw, started seeing other people in, in similar situations out on the street a little bit like when you buy a new car and you see that car, that same make car on the street, out on the road. For me, I, um, you know, for, for two years, everywhere I went, I just saw injured people. And I, um, you know, I'd be walking down the street, I'd be with, with a friend or partner and see someone a hundred meters away with a arm in a sling. And I'd just be like, a, I'd take off and I'd have to sort of then, you know, try and turn it into a photo. And I think the, um, you know, probably about a year into the project, the, the, the challenge as a photographer was to, to sort of create photos that were more than just a, you know, an interesting injury. They had, to, they had to work on a couple of levels. It had to be an interesting injury as well as an interesting photo. So composition came into it. And then, you know, there were certain pictures like this where it was that all about that, that moment, but it was a sort of a combination of both with, with this body of work. And then, you know, you, as, as you all know, from time to time, you get lucky when you're out on the street. If the more you're out there shooting, you know, you, you're putting yourself out there and things just happen. And I remember walking down Flinders Lane in the city um, and just, you know, shooting this woman with the, the spine and just keeping a nice distance behind her and shooting as she walked along. And I was living sort of just at the top of that, that picture. You can see there's an apartment block. So I was walking home from my morning coffee and um, yeah, I was just shooting, you know, four or five pictures of her and then, just get lucky at the, the intersection with the guy with the crutch that walks through. 
So, you know, you do get, you put in the, you put in the work and you hear a lot of photographers say, you put in the work, you get, you get the reward and you get the, the bit of luck from time to time. So, um, and same with this one, this was the, the last picture in the, in the, um, in the series and the, the, the body of work is essentially finished by now. Like I'd, I'd had the book, um, the book was in, in kind of production and it was almost set. And then I, I sort of came across this picture right at the end and I'd actually switched to color by this stage. So this, this is a, a color photo that's been converted to, to black and white for the, the sake of the series. So um, yeah, that was when I sort of, I knew the, the project was finished. So when I got this, I thought that's it. And then I think for probably the next five years, I, I didn't see anyone out on the street with an injury. It was just one of those things. As soon as the project was finished, it was, it was just something I just didn't notice. And it was, it was something I was, I was sort of a bit sick of in a sense that I'd, I'd spent two years and it was a very narrow kind of viewpoint I was sort of focusing on as a photographer. And I think I probably would have missed a lot of other shots over that, that period. But um, so it was a good project to finish. Um, so yeah, that was the, the end of that. And, um, <laughs> it's a great photo. I mean, what are the chances of a statue having a sling on and someone walking down the street with their same arm in a sling? It's yeah, I've driven, I've driven past the statue, I think, probably three or four times and seen it. And, you know, the, the restaurant owners, had, had, I think after about a week of him just standing there with the, the arm missing, they put the sling on him. And, and then, I, you know, I was driving past one day and I had a bit of time. So I... I stopped the car and I, I sort of stood there as a cold winter's day and on this busy road in Melbourne. And, you know, I'm standing there with my camera, taking a few shots of just the, the mannequin on its own. And then, you know, I spot this, this guy walking towards me from, you know, probably two or 300 metres away. Anyone that, um, it's actually next door to PSC in, in, oh, in yeah. on City Road. So PSC is to the left. And then, you know, I start seeing this guy with the, the sling coming from the art centre. And I'm standing there going, what, what's going on here? This is, this is just a bit weird. So I'm pre-focusing on the wall. And, and then it's just a matter of waiting for him to sort of walk, walk into frame. And then, you know, everything's set. I've got my shutter speed set, you know, exposure, focus, can't miss this. And then he stops that menu board and he starts reading a menu board on the left. And I'm like, oh, I missed it. Damn it. And I, I did this silly bird whistle and, you know, he sort of he turned around and it, it must have prompted him to keep walking. He's given me that look like, you know, what am I doing? I've taken that picture and then I've proceeded to sort of stand there and pretend to shoot the building, which was a pretty ugly building. So he was probably thinking, what's, what's this guy? You know, what's he doing? So, um, yeah, it was, that's when I knew the project was over and I, I sort of rushed to the lab and dropped that film in and said, you know, quick, let's get this processed and rang up the designer in London and said, I've got to add this picture in, this has got to be in there. So the designer was, was, a bit annoyed but he was happy at the same time so it was good to um yeah it was good to finish it so um how, how many photos were in uh, the book just it's yeah look i i because i've been going through old negatives with the other work i've sort of been going through all of that work as well because they're all kind of from that same period that 2000 and probably th two to 2004 yeah so i reckon there was probably four or five hundred injuries that i then got you know it kind of edited itself as i shot it but um you know, I look at it now and I sort of think, I think there's 39 photos in the book and, um, you know, from the, from the, you know, whatever it was, three, four or 500, there was, I'd say 250 to 300 of them are just, just boring, broken arms, always a right arms. People seem to fall and put their right arm out. So, um, <clears throat> you know, like I said, the challenge was, was for, to kind of create pictures that, that had more of a, you know, a story to them. So, the, um, it was a pretty easy edit in a sense that, you know, there was 200 boring photos of just boring injuries. And, <laughs> you know, the better injuries and the better photos kind of revealed themselves as, as it was being shot. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So that was, that was a, a good period to finish. And then, <clears throat> yeah, I started, um, so I switched to colour just before, as that, that last picture was, was taken in that kind of 2004, end of 2004. And then, I um yeah I spent nine years so nine years shooting this one body of work which uh, I turned into a book and um, stole the title from a Vodafone ad up the top as you can see there and I um yeah so same lens 
same camera, same film, and all horizontal for nine years. So I didn't didn't change lenses. It was all with the the same camera and yeah so I was really kind of I showed my work to someone I think the year before and they'd sort of it was a book I did about Aboriginal football and <clears throat> during that body of work I'd used you know zoom lenses and um, panoramic cameras and you know wide angles some flash there's a whole kind of you know range of different cameras and lenses being used in that body of work and I remember showing to this this um this editor from Germany and, and she's sort of looking at the book and she's sort of making these faces. I was like, geez, didn't think it was that bad. And then she's kind of like, you know, at the end, she sort of said, look, at, you know, as a body of work, there's it sort of, it, it, you know, there's, it doesn't flow all that well because you, you kept sort of changing lenses and panoramic and flash. And so she really kind of um, pushed this idea on me to kind of just really stick to one, one camera for a body of work or one lens to help sort of build that that consistency and yeah it's something that I suppose you get occasionally you get some good advice from people and you you sort of remember it and and kind of take it on board and for me that was a really I think kind of crucial bit of advice that I think from that sort of period on I feel like I've I sort of found my own voice as a photographer so yeah I'll just go through some of these uh photos from that that series and yeah if there's any as we go and just yell out. Sure. So this image won you the bonus photography prize, is that right, Jesse? It did, yeah. So this was the bonus prize, a bit bonus, bonus, whatever it is in um, oh, as in bow tie, bonus. Bow tie, yeah, bow tie, <laughs> bonus, bonus prize in I think 2012. And um, you know, it was I normally I didn't I don't think I put the the proof sheet of this picture in, but I, I normally have it in the presentation. So some of you might have seen it, but as, Essentially, this photo was a complete kind of, as most street photos are, they're, you know, they're not planned, it's a total accident. But what I had sort of planned to do the day that I took this photo was just take a photo of that shop window. And I went out there and I'd seen, if the, at, at the top of the screen, at the top of the photo, you can see the, the cars reflected in the, in the shop window. So I'd been sitting in that traffic probably a month before I took this photo and I noticed this shop window that was angled and it was picking up the the afternoon sun reflecting off it with the, the zebra crossing. I remember, you know, saying to myself, I'm going to come back out here when I've got some, got some time. And I, um, yeah, snuck out there one afternoon and, and, and stood at this sort of intersection for probably five or 10 minutes and just photographed that, that composition, that shop window with the lines, the zebra crossing. And then, yeah, just like that picture before of the, the, um, the two, the mannequin and the, the broken arm, you get lucky. This woman, walked through, uh, she walked through to the left, sort of right to left. And I think I've gone back and had a look and there's a, a post box there. So I can only assume she's posted a letter, walked back through, I've taken, um, I think I took two frames was on film as she went through and then as she went back. So um, yeah, and this was the, the, the one that, um, yeah, won me the prize. So it was, and then I, you know, if I look at the proof sheet, I went back to shooting the, um, the, the shop window for another five or 10, and shots after I took this one. So yeah, it's funny how, you know, you can, you can sort of have a plan to go and shoot something one day and then something just completely unplanned like this happens and then it can sort of become a picture that, you know, gets into a body of work and then, you know, wins you a prize. So um, awesome. yeah, I always say, you know, it's always good to, to keep an open mind when you're shooting and not sort of be too closed off to any, any particular styles or, or, um, or potential pictures yeah and then this we've one got, oh, we've got a question um yeah. Jesse, so from rebecca over in perth so she Hi, asked rebecca. with this body of work were yeah. you consciously developing a series or did this come along a few more years into it yeah so i had a it's a good question i had an exhibition i think in 2006 so about two years into the the work and that's where the the title came from. I, I, you know, I had to sort of give the exhibition a name, and you know, I didn't want to call it like eight color photos or new color work or something like that. So I, I pinched that title, and then I suppose that's when the the, the body of work was kind of first, um, you know, out there as a body of work. And then it just kind of, I think, over that nine year period, it, pictures just came in and pictures came out, and then 
you know, the idea to do the book uh, came about after probably, I think, seven or eight years. I always like sort of, you know, working towards, a, a, a you know, putting a, a body of work into a book. And then, um, yeah, and then I sort of, I like kind of with an edit of work, I'm, I don't, I'm not a sort of a huge fan of putting 80, 90 photos into a body of work. I like to kind of keep it quite small and, and, and quite tight. So this, um, you know, just, yeah, just, edited itself and um you know there's there's probably you know three or four hundred pictures that you know i've got a folder from that that period that all this all the pictures that i had shot that were any good are in that folder and then out of that you know one in sort of ten made it into the book so it um yeah it sort of just just kind of developed it as i as i shot it and then you know the fun bit sort of starts when you start putting the book together and start sequencing it and, and looking at, at pictures that work and and I look at it now and I sort of think you know it's been out for six or seven years the book and I look and I go you know there's probably four or five I'd, I probably wouldn't put in and could probably <laughs> take out and swap them with other ones that I've since found from that period that I think shit why don't I put that in the book that would have been good so um yeah I'll, I'll that's I suppose how the, the body of work developed yeah so we've got another question here from uh jason boys he is in melbourne hey, jason. and he asks uh so when you started shooting street photography how did you choose which images to share and how did you know what worked and and did you ever run out of cho chosen shots did hang on and did you ever run your chosen shots through close friends or your peers yeah, so I was, um, <clears throat> so initially I had that teacher at photography school that was really, you know, like, you know, my, his, his influences as, as a photography teacher and photographer himself were Alex Webb and Kadelka. So he, he had a really good um, sense of, you know, strong work. So he was, he was really kind of um, inspiring on that level for, for me as a young photographer. And then I, I think it was in 2001, I joined a, a collective of street photographers called In Public, which at the time was, you know, it was only a year old. And I was, I think I was, I was probably like 22 at the time. And, um, you know, there was a group of London photographers, Matt Stewart, Nick Turpin, Richard Bram, there was a couple others from London, David Gibson. And then there was two Aussies who you all know, Trent Park and Narelle, and they were really, um, you know, it was when uh, Narelle was doing a, her um, watercolour series. And I remember saying, you know, we had this sort of online discussion board and I was a sort of, you know, 21, 22, two-year-old kind of still learning, but had, had sort of somehow made it into this group and not really knowing much about kind of the, I suppose, the, the street photography didn't really have a kind of a, a, a sort of a name at the time. It was just this kind of thing that, you know, a few photographers were doing. Um, and then, yeah, it just sort of exploded. So that was, you know, we had this, this discussion board and we would kind of all post photos that we'd sort of been out taking that day or had when we'd got film processed and scanned and got work that we wanted to share with the group. So it was a really, um, you know, you kind of, you knew pretty quickly. It's a little bit, you know, like, I suppose, Instagram now, you put a photo up and, you know, you just sort of, some photos work and some photos <laughs> don't with, with, with the crowd. But, um, yeah. you know, you'd put a, a photo up on the board and you'd have, you know, silence. You knew straight away it was it was no good. But then if it was, you know, members of the group engaging with it and asking questions and and sort of chatting about it, you, you kind of, it, it really... Um, I suppose propelled you as a young photographer to kind of want to get out and keep keep shooting that work so I suppose you know going back to your question about what how I chose photos that were good I for me I've uh, going back and, and sort of thinking about that that kind of first body of work where I was really kind of developing as a photographer I suppose the things that I've always been drawn to are, are photos that combine a few different elements so I think one of them's um you know, people, place, and the moment. So Cardia Brasson was a, another really important photographer to me, and his his work's all about that composition and the moment. And then other influence, kind of other influence, other photographers that have influenced with, you know, Elliot Erwitt with humour and stuff like that. So I've tried to sort of, you know, combine elements and, and, and kind of, I suppose, then create work that kind of is... is I suppose, true to who I am as a person. I think it's important that, you know, through your work as a photographer, people can see, 
you as a person. So um, yeah, I think when when photos, I suppose, when photos work for me or when all those kind of elements kind of combine, so graphics, uh, humor, people, place, and the moment. So hopefully that, yeah. that answers that one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I've heard people are liking your work to um, that of Jeffrey Smart as well, the way you use shape and color and the urban environment. Yeah, so Jeffrey Smart was, um, I think, you know, after that initial kind of, you know, 10 years of like buying every photography book I could, could afford, <laughs> um, I started looking for inspiration other places and Jeffrey Smart was definitely a, you know, a painter who's, whose work really spoke to me. And I think, you know, it's all about that. It's all about the, the colour and, and the scale. And, you know, he's, he's like a, a street photographer, but he was using a different medium. So, um, yeah. yeah, I've just got this little proof sheet here, just showing the kind of the, the sequence, just to show how the, you know, the composition comes about. It's For me, it's never just one picture. It's, um, you know, sometimes it is, but generally if, you know, if something stops me, I'll, I'll sort of work the scene and, and try and improve it as I'm as I'm shooting. And you can see here, I think it's like the third picture that that kind of uh, where things come together graphically. And, um, you know, and that's just from me taking the first couple of shots and then realizing that, you know, I want her head or the hat to sort of be balanced in that, that black square behind. So yeah, it's just, um, it's always good to kind of, I think it's good to, to show, you know, the, the, the proof sheet of how the, the picture has sort of came about. And this one here, this is, um, this is, you know, I've worked for newspaper. I worked for newspapers for a number of years. And, you know, one of the, the things when you work for a paper is you, you can't miss the shot. So you've got an editor that, you know, is expecting you to come back with a picture. So I've used that, that kind of, that mentality a lot when I'm, I'm out on the street on my own working for myself. And, and you know, for this, this sort of picture here, I remember, walking up Little Burke Street and, and um, seeing these guys carrying the glass. And, and then I was probably a hundred meters away. And, and then I you know, said to myself, damn it, I've missed it. But then I've looked at the truck and then I've seen that they've got you know, three or four more sheets of glass on the truck. So then I'm you know, positioning myself at the corner of this laneway and then just waiting for them to, to kind of come through. And I think this must've been probably sheet three or four because the, the um, you know, the bloke on the second from the end on the left is, is sort of, he's probably had enough of me shooting pictures, but um, <laughs> yeah, so that was that kind of, I suppose, sums up the, the approach when I'm out there that I'll, I'll try and, you know, just shoot until I've kind of exhausted the, the situation. Yeah. Compositionally or, you know, until the person sort of keeps moving. Oh, this is one of my favourites of yours. This is the, yeah, the Jeffrey Smart sort of. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this one, I, I took this just around the corner from my house and I, I still drive past this spot every day, hoping that this, this, uh, there's gonna be another picture like this, but the hoarding's all been painted black now. So it doesn't look as, um, doesn't look anywhere near as interesting. And um, yeah, I've just got a little sequence here just to, to show, I think it was the bottom left. Yeah, that the, um, yeah. So I've just stood there for probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes from memory um, and just shot probably a roll and a half, two rolls, the film as this you know group of workers just went back and forth you know picking up sheets of yellow hoarding and you know I probably just it was one of those ones it was a bit you know when I look back at it it was it was there it was in front of me I you know it was I just had to kind of make sure everything was focused and 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 sharp and you know the, compositionally the picture was there so yeah it was a, just a you know, it's, I suppose it's a photo that I'm pretty proud of. It sort of works on a, a few levels and it, yeah. That was, it's a photo that um, the National Gallery of Victoria have in their collection. Yeah, they bought this one and a couple of others um, from that series. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah. This is in the How did that conversation come about, Jesse? <laughs> oh, that, um, what well, sort of so I've exhibited different um, photos from the body of work, and then I think when the, the book came out, and you know I won that competition and I won the the Bowness Prize as well. So I think you know it's hard. I don't really know how it came about, other than I must have just been on the the radar, and yeah, you know I think it was on the front cover of a book as well. So I think when that happened, maybe there was a you know 
bit of a push to, to purchase it. So that was that how was amazing good. though. Get an email. Yeah. You would like to purchase. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good email it. to get. I, I, I must admit, <laughs> it was it was something I was you know as a you know photographer and having exhibited for a number of years. It's kind of that that point in your career where you go, that's pretty cool. So um, yeah, yeah, I was pretty proud of that. I remember um taking my kids in and, and showing my kids and sort of, oh. yeah, it was a sweet moment. So that was cool. They, I think it was up for about three months at the Federation Square NGV. So that was back in, I think, 2016 or 17. So yeah, yeah. anyway, I'll move on from that one. Um, so this is, yes, yeah, so everything I've just shown up until now is, was all film. And I, I got a phone call from Leica back in, I think 2015, they had this new camera that they were bringing out and they wanted me to do some work for it and I was always you know I'm film I'm film I'm still film you know this is before film was kind of had gone through this kind of kind of resurgence sort of resurgence that it's had in the last sort of four years but um yeah so switching to digital for personal work was a real kind of a real jump for me I, I'd sort of loved that I'd known that it, all of my work was on film up until this point I knew you know, I know where it is. It's you know in the in the cupboard behind me, and um, now I've got a desk that you can't see here full of hard drives, which kind of freaks me out. I've got hard drives backing up hard drives backing up hard drives that are backing up at seven o'clock every night. And my tech guy says that's the best way to do it, but it still freaks me out. I still love the idea of just having a negative, but um, you know I think it was a, a sort of the right move to make as a as a photographer. And I sort of look back at it and think it's yeah it came about at the right time I had young kids and I think the idea of of I was quite an impatient film photographer those last few years I'd sort of you know I'd, if, if I thought I had something and it was only three shots into the role I'd, I'd drive to the lab and get it processed so there was a lot of a lot of trips to the lab to pick up a you know a roll of film with four shots on it so um I was uh I think digital came about at the right time so this is um this is yeah from work from that that last five years all all shot on digital and that's it's essentially an extension of of the book work the the film work that i'd done in the the yellow book don't just tell them so um yeah i'll just go through some of these and if there's any yeah this one this one i, I took this, this is a, a leaf on a car bonnet and i um you know i saw this leaf sitting there on, on this bonnet of this car and I, I i sort of leant over the car and i was trying to kind of frame it up and just make sure that that composition all worked and that line of the the end of the leaf touched the line of the the building and the other end touching the little shadow at the bottom and I remember really laboring over it and um, probably spent five or ten minutes it was it was quite a tricky thing to sort of do because it was right in the middle of the bonnet and then I I, I got this the pride of my life the woman I didn't realize but there's a woman sitting in the car and she was um, trying to leave and she was just waiting for me and she tooted her horn and she's like, can, what are you doing? Can you, can you move now? And that was, <laughs> I got this, you know, massive fright. And I, I think she thought I was on drugs or something, but um, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was one of those, those, uh, yeah, those moments I had to kind of try and work as a, you know, compositionally and sort of bring it together. Yeah, sure. It's great. Now this one's a bit different, it's a bit, um, a bit different to the other work in that, you know, this was, I was doing a commission for a, council and i um yeah i came across these three guys kicking the footy at lunch in some sort of industrial estate out in ringwood and like i said before i don't normally engage with um my subject but because this was a commission and i was doing this thing for the council i sort of i got chatting to the guys and they said yeah come in and just shoot some pictures so slightly different to the other work in that you know they're they're aware i'm there and they've sort of given consent for me to be there and, and shoot pictures but um it, you know it's still in the series but it's got a bit of a slightly different feel for me and this one kind of the complete opposite this was um i took this a couple of years ago and yeah this guy's broken down on on hoddle street so anyone from melbourne will know this is um not a road that you want your radiator blowing up on on a hot day in melbourne and he sort of must have you know dragged the car into parked it in at the um at the um Coles Express or whatever it is and yeah I've just sort of seen him he had the bonnet up a couple of minutes before this and I actually didn't have my camera on me and I, I was just going to get some 
something from the shops. So I didn't even take my camera and I ran back to the car and grabbed it and sort of ran through and he wasn't too happy. So I, um, I didn't sort of stop and labor over this one. It was just a kind of a two or three shots as I walked through and, and I didn't, um, uh, yeah, I didn't, didn't want him sort of catching me, but then someone it popped up on a Facebook thing and one of his friends saw it and tagged him in on it. And he, so he wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> too happy, but um, that's all right. And um, I'm guessing it's quite deliberate in the corner there. You've got the witch's hat lined up with the shadow of you taking the photo. No, the total accident. I didn't really? even see the witch's hat. Or if I did see it, it was out of the corner of my eye. But like I said, it was, it was, I was walking through at quite a pace. I didn't want to, I didn't, didn't want to stop and be kind of laboring over this one. It was, it was not, not the, the time or place. It was just a, yeah. yeah, but you know, like I said before, you get lucky. You know the, the witch's hat yep totally deliberate meant it so um uh yeah so that was that, that was that one so i'll just go through a few of these so this is just in in tokyo last year i don't shoot children this is my daughter i um i generally don't one of the things i don't do when i'm out on the street is is, is shoot photos of kids or photos at, at parks it's just one of those things it's often as a as a photographer it's it's kind of not worth the, the hassle sometimes to sort of to do it so I just don't it's just something I, I just generally don't do but this was a bit different being my daughter so yeah that was that one that's in the series this is just a rubbish bin down in the the country I drove past one day um just trying to sort of turn a, a boring skip into a you know something more compositionally and then just um you know playing around with the, the the composition as it as it's there in front of me and just you know you know bending my knees just to sort of bring the horizon line down and make the bin so these are the the sort of the things i kind of do when i shoot i'm, I'm it's never just one picture um it's you know sometimes 20 or 30 just trying to sort of work that composition and often it's the, like the third or fourth um it's the third or fourth kind of composition within a frame, like within a, a scene that, that, that kind of then it reveals itself photographically for me. So I like having those kind of those challenges with, with pictures like this, with those kind of more graphic pictures and scenes that are a bit more static and trying to sort of solve a, a mm. photographic puzzle. So, um, yeah. yeah, and this was, uh, this was a recent one. This was early on in lockdown, I think, um, just down at the, the Yellow Peril. I'd always, you know, it's one of those iconic Melbourne spots that it's there, it's, you know, it's that strong color. I think, Susan, you've got a great picture of this, haven't you? Yes, with yeah. the chair, yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's just a, you know, it's, it's just it so it lends itself photographically, doesn't it? It's one of those. That's amazing, yeah. Yeah, so this was um, Sunday morning and um, just, yeah, saw the old guy walking through and just kind of got into position. And so, then, so did you have to wait long for someone to walk past on a no, Sunday morning? I was actually driving and I saw him and he was it, he was walking at quite a slow pace. So I, I saw him sort of on that on that kind of that that forecourt area there at Acker. Ac, 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 Ac. Yeah, Acker. And um, you know, I think I swung a U-turn across the road and then, you know, assumed he was gonna continue that way. And he had a walking frame, so that's why his his um his arms are sort of extended and then, you know, I it was a Sunday morning, so I could get a park. I just parked the car and sort of 45 degree angle and jumped out and then just sort of, you know, didn't run, but I, I walked quite quickly into position because I knew exactly where I wanted him when he was sort of inching that way. And then, yep. yeah, it took a few, two or three frames as he sort of walked through. Did you do a funny whistle to get him to turn to no, you? No funny whistles. <laughs> I think I might have given him a fright though because he's giving me that look. He's... I think he's wondering what, what's this guy doing, but um, you do get those looks from time to time, and I think you know that's that's part of, of doing this sort of work. You've got to you've got to be prepared for that, and um, yeah, I think it's it's just worth it. So I yeah. continue to do it. Um, this is a little body of work I did last year in Tokyo. So I did a, a thing for the new Leica camera, and I think I spent four days, four or five days over there, and, and shot this you know body of work that was to you know, help sell the new camera that they brought out. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I just, it was one of those, um, you know, you get to a, fo a foreign country, a, a new destination, and you've got four days to produce a body of work and no real kind of uh, plan other than here's the street and here's the camera and off you go. So it was, um, 
yeah, it was a great sort of challenge as a photographer to start kind of looking for, for different pictures and then, yeah, and then just kind of sort of turn it into a body of work that can kind of, I suppose, show off the, the camera's capabilities. Um, yeah, so I'll just go through these quickly. There's only two or three of these. This was from the train on the way to, to having a mental blank here. It was on the way to Kyoto and, yeah, just... Um, I'd actually, I was asleep and the guy that came tagged along and filmed it was waking me up going, you know, Mount Fuji, Mount Fuji. And I woke up and, you know, took, took a handful of frames as we sort of went over this bridge. And um, yeah, this was, I think, one of the, the key pictures that they used for the, the campaign. And yeah, this is just a, another picture from that series. A um, bit of a different feel to some other work, but uh, it sort of, it, it sat in that, that Tokyo body of work and, um yeah and then yeah just the more kind of graphic compositional stuff i don't know, really know how this sells the camera that i was there to sort of launch but it was just something that just a nice moment that i that i came across and i remember sort of standing out in the middle of the road and trying to get that that line completely straight and wait for the sun to come out it was a cloudy day and the sun kept sort of coming out and and yeah so it was it ended up being quite a simple looking picture but it was a photo that was kind of quite labored over to, to get that really sort of deliberate composition and straight line. And then 2020, what a year. So here we are in Melbourne. So um, yeah, I thought I'd just show a bit of stuff, a bit of work of what I've been up to, which I don't know. It's, what, <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing in COVID, Jesse? <laughs> well, early on, nothing. I, I homeschooled a seven and nine year old. So that was, that was a bit of a challenge and something I'll never forget. But um, but then at night, you know, it's sort of five o'clock, I'd, I'd sort of sneak out and go for a quick drive around my local area and hope that, you know, people were out, but but they weren't. So, um, yeah, it was really tough photographically. And I, I sort of put the camera away for a few weeks early on and didn't, didn't even sort of really think of shooting. And then I think it was probably oh, maybe early on in maybe sort of stage four, I think I started thinking, no, I've got to get out there and shoot. And I'd sort of resisted going into the city and, and, and doing the, you know, the Flinders Street station and the, the empty laneways. So, and I just sort of kind of wanted to shoot around my own area and just sort of focus on that and not go too far. So over, you know, the next sort of seven or eight weeks, I'd sort of developed this little body of work and, um, this was the little accountant down on Smith Street that was, you know, he was he was waiting for business to, to reopen and just walked past one day and he was he was out there and with his Nokia, his Nokia I think he's got, and it's a bit of an odd scene. And then office works, just just bizarre things. I just saw him in my little walks around the area. And um, yeah, so this just yeah, I suppose it's just been a tough period for everyone, obviously, and um, just trying yeah. to kind of produce a little body of work that kind of summed it up for me and just, um, yeah, I'll just go through these. Sure. This was uh, outside my five kilometre limit, but um, it's about six and a half. I was picking up some negatives, but um, yeah, this guy was just doing his, uh, you know, I was just doing some stretches on the, it's like the trapeze, the what are they called? The the I forgot a mental blank. What are those things called? The the round things? Um, Circus oh. rings. Rings. That's <laughs> it. Sorry, thanks, Susan. The rings. Yeah, he had the rings up in a tree, and he was he was getting into it. So a lot of sort of public um, exercising that you know people yeah. were out and about. And this is down in Cremorne. Uh, um, I've got a bit of a route that I kind of. When I was going out at five o'clock and shooting, I'd kind of drive down the same streets and, you know, day after day and, and just essentially there was no one around. And um, yeah, so I was looking at, you know, light and shadows and stuff like that. And then, you know, the rock posters like this were all faded. There was, you know, posters that sort of, you know, there were no gigs on. So I started sort of noticing that. And then that led to this, um, this other little, project I've been doing during lockdown which has been doing these paste ups so all um, <clears throat> you know I was I was doing them before the curfew so 
I um I didn't I didn't break the curfew to do any of them. Um, but yeah, I've just been going out at night and um, putting some photos up. There's yeah, the streets were were pretty um pretty dead and you know posters were coming off wall falling off walls and I thought it needed a bit of freshening up so I've spent probably oh probably the last 10 weeks going out and 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 doing these and yeah really getting into the whole I suppose the 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 public art side of things but as well as the kind of the challenge to kind of like find pictures that work with other pictures and then put them into grids and then and then put them up and this is um this is on punt road down on in east melbourne this is i think still up or it was yesterday so um yeah just trying to trying to do more of this at the moment it's keeping um a bit of fun a bit of, bit of nighttime fun so yeah i think it's a great idea to um keep art alive i guess essentially because certainly in victoria we haven't had any museums or galleries open for us to go inside and see art. And so I think it's a great way to actually yeah. bring art to the people. Well, that was the plan. I'd sort of planned to have a show this year. And then when that got kind of derailed, I thought, well, I'm still going to have a show and it's, it's not going to cost as much as, you know, printing and mounting and framing, you know, 15 pictures and then um, having to sort of house those pictures afterwards in a somewhere. So I like the, um, you know the disposable nature of the the posters in the you know the, they can be up for 24 hours or they can be up for six six weeks or eight weeks ten weeks so it's it's been good to to get that out there and and, and do it and you know getting yeah. some really good feedback from it and people are sending me messages when they've driven past and taken photos so that's it's been yeah really awesome. really yeah. fun project to do and we've got a question wonderful. from jerry in jerry. New South Wales uh, he's, asked, he's asking, did you ask to put up, to put these up? The last <laughs> one, this one here I did. I, this is the only one I've asked permission to do. And what I've, what I've done the whole way through is, as you can probably see, I've kind of targeted um, spots where there's already been, been rock posters. So, you know, essentially, you know, you, you're allowed, you know, the rock poster companies have been doing it. For a number of years as you can see there there's probably i think you know three years worth of posters on that wall that are sort of you know in a state of decay and then i've then just come over the top and and, and added to it but um <clears throat> but yeah generally no not asking for permission just doing it and then especially with this building here this was um a bit of a mission to do this one but then this last one here was down in Port Melbourne and <clears throat> I drove past and this whole fence of this building was had you know rock posters that were all peeling off and it looked terrible and I, I went into the bloke and I said there was a um he's got a barbecue kind of uh, smokehouse next door to this building and I said to him you know do you mind if I put some posters up on your your front fence he's like go for it so he's been the only one that I've, I've you know asked permission to to sort of do it so um I yeah. suppose for me, part of it's the, the, the challenge as well of, of, you know, putting them up at night and without permission, that's, that's something that, you know, I quite enjoy. So, um, yeah, just, but yeah, apart from that last one, they've all been. Gorilla. Gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've got a question here from Jim Love and he hey, says, do they have your name and contact details on? No, I haven't put my name or contact details on any of them. I've just, I've tried to, I've tried to just keep it as a, a bit of a, you know, a bit of an anonymous thing, but um, I do go back and photograph it. And that's um, one of the sort of enjoyable things to then go back the next day and, um, you know, I'm trying to photograph it and, you know, try and make it into an in interesting picture in itself. But um, and on one occasion I went back to a wall and, um, someone in the space of me doing it at about nine o'clock that night, me getting at seven o'clock in the morning to photograph it, someone had come through after me that same night and done a full full piece of graffiti over it. So I've, um, that was a bit of a, I sort of got there early. I was like, hang on, this is, this is a bit weird. I was here last night and this was not like this and now it's like this. So it's part of the territory, but um, yeah, it's, yeah. I think that answers the question, doesn't it, Jim? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got another question yeah. that's just popped in from Kylie. She says, excellent work, Jesse. Love the paste ups. Do you have any new projects? Um, 
you want to begin or have you already started um, and oh hang on hang on <laughs> do you have any new projects you want to begin or have already started in the near future now we can go out in Melbourne well yeah my ongoing project of just the, the color street stuff just a you know the body of work that I just kind of add to as I as I kind of just keep shooting so that's I suppose the only ongoing body of work that I've got I had a another project I was doing up in the Northern Territory last year, and that was going to kind of continue this year, but that hasn't really happened with, with travel. So that's sort of on hold. And then, um, yeah, just doing the posters and working on this book that's out next in January. So I've kind of got, you know, a couple of, a couple of projects in sort of in production as, as well as the, just the ongoing street stuff, which, yeah, I just sort of chip away at. I don't, I don't kind of, with all the you know the color street stuff that I do, I don't I don't kind of like go out and put a time time frame on it. It's just shot organically and and just you know in my daily travels and added to as it's added to. And I find if I kind of put pressure on myself to you know all right by February I'm going to finish this project and and you know it's done and I'm going to exhibit it. It's it's I guarantee that if I if I put that pressure on myself the next three months I'd get nothing. So. I kind of just just chip away at it and, and just kind of add to it as I shoot it and then and then the body of work like I've said earlier it just kind of evolves and then um, edits itself as it goes and that's that's kind of been my working approach for pretty yeah. much the whole way through and continues to be yeah we've got another question here from Terry Corbett and he says have you heard the weddings parties anything song summons in the morning about being caught putting up posters up on barren walls no but i'm going to google it gonna write, <laughs> can, you, can you send me a link to that or hold on i'm going to write that down what is it <laughs> so weddings parties anything yeah summons in the morning okay s-u-m-m-o-n-s -M -M cool. thanks terry i'm gonna i'm gonna google that later <laughs> i don't know it. i know some of the some of the other stuff i don't know that song so yeah I'll check that one out. Awesome. Great. Yeah, love this project, Jesse. Oh, thanks. It's yeah, a little Banksy-like, isn't it? Say again? I said it's a bit Banksy-like. Well, it's just it's just a bit fun. It's just a bit, you know, just wanting to do something, just get out there and do something. I'm not very good at sort of sitting still. And that first period in lockdown where I was, you know, at home and, and, and not doing much just got me... You know, it got me a bit anxious and sort of wanting to sort of get out there and do something. And I, I'd been doing posters. I'd done um, posters back in 2006 and 2008 when I was overseas. And I'd done a, a few over in Italy and, and, and Europe. And then, but never really had the time to kind of concentrate on it and sort of see where it kind of went. And I think having that time through COVID has given me that opportunity to kind of like, explore the concept and you know coming up with like just looking at this picture here that that kind of repetition of images mm. like you see with the rock posters that's something that um you know you always see them kind of like four in a row of the same posters so things yeah. like that like and just being able to sort of explore that 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 concept a bit more with with having the time has has been yeah. something that's yeah been really you yeah know, official. I almost feel like um the theme of street photography being you know the decisive moment and ephemeral eth yeah, ephemeral type um, yeah. moments I guess in time is um, almost uh, depicted I guess in the posters right because eventually they're going to fade and yeah they're going to fade yeah so, almost... yeah some of them don't last long so like yeah. I said you know I'll get out there the next morning and, and try to get a picture and, and document it because it could be gone that afternoon and now that things are reopening some of the, a lot of the spots that I've, I've kind of I've got this whole folder on my phone of different you know potential spots I'm going to do posters on and then you know I've gone back to some this week that I found last week and they've already you know because of reopening <clears throat> they've already um you know the rock poster company have already you know started putting up the ads again so the window of opportunity was was kind of there during COVID but I, you know going forward I don't know how long there'll be these sort of this expanse of empty walls so yeah Good to, to do a while when I did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Something to see along the way to uh, the supermarket, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of the reasons we're allowed to go out. I know. Oh. 
Um, so we've got another question here from Jason yeah. Boys in Melbourne. Jason. Do you feel that street photography in the wider community has changed in any way since you started or is it for the better or worst? Well, there's worst. certainly a lot more of it. Um, back when I started sort of, when I when in public started in 2000 um, and I joined it in 2001, there was, I think there was probably, you know, as a dedicated street photography collective, I think it was the only one. And then, you know, it's certainly, um, exploded you know globally with with as everyone knows with different festivals and competitions and books and podcasts and and you know zines and you name it there's there's it's 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 everywhere which is great and it's um yeah i think um going back to the question is has it sort of been, was it has it improved is that the question susan yeah um yeah i think there's there's definitely trends you see with with work and um i think for me I just sort of try, try to just, you know, do, I, I try not to sort of be influenced by, by what, you know, current trends or whatever else and just try to sort of just do my own <clears throat> style and, and continue that and, and kind of just keep adding to the, the bodies of work, body of work that I'm working on. But um, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots going on, that's for sure. Um, you've been judge um, in the Emerging Photographer of the Year competition, Jesse, and you're also judge last year for the Aussie Street um, Festival. What are you looking yep. for in a winning image? Well, probably just pictures that are, you know, original and, you know, I know it's hard to take, not be influenced by the photographers, but I think when you're, you're looking at a body of work or you know three or four pictures from one photographer you do want to see that that visual consistency and i think you know just from from chatting with other judges and and other you know people that are sort of running these competitions that that that's always the sort of the constant is that they want you know work that's different and um original and yeah just i suppose just that but then all of that as well as you know just great great moments that are you know just that are being captured and I suppose it's, it's a tough one I think you kind of when you're judging these competitions you you kind of you know it when you see it it's it's um so yeah it's the original work that 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 works on a few levels that's that's different that's um consistent over a body of work and that's kind of probably it and then kind of get together with two or three other judges and you know, riff off each other and then come up with a winner. And that's usually what happens. But um, I think I'm yeah. judging something a bit later on, on this year. So I, have to, I haven't judged anything this year. So I've got, got this one later in the year to do. So I have to dust off the judging hat. <laughs> what advice, Jesse, would you give um, someone new to street photography? So essentially, um, I think when you're starting off, I think it's, it's really important to kind of not be too narrow with what you're looking for. I think, um, I think it's kind of good to explore different approaches when you're starting off, because then, you know, you then after a little while, you know, you'll start to find your own voice as a photographer. And I think when, when, when that happens, that's when, you know, your work can take that next leap, that next step, um, whether that's through, you know, a body of work, through an exhibition or a book or a spread in a magazine or getting into a competition. I think it's, it's, it's finding your own voice that um, can take time. Um, for me, you know, I think when I look back at my work over the, that sort of 25 year period, it's that, it's that kind of probably seven or eight years into it when I started shooting colour that I, I think I found my own voice as a photographer. And up until then, you know, the black and white work um, for me, you know, it was kind of, I was being influenced by Cardi Bresson and, and, and stuff like this. So I think it's, it's important to, to find what, what you're about as a person, as a photographer, and then kind of bring that together and then bring that out in your own work. And I think once that happens, then you're, you're off and running. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you said you went to Tokyo for um, for a week or so. Um, yeah. What are the challenges you faced 
um, shooting in a different country? Well, I was there. I mean, I was there on that on that commission. So it was the ch- the main challenge with that one was just you know coming up with the work and having a. I had a film crew with me that was filming it all. So um, <clears throat> that was you know that was the most stressful part of that. But um, generally, I think just going back to what I said earlier, just not putting pressure on yourself. I think I think when you sort of get to a, a place that's different to where you normally should, you kind of, you have in your head that, you know, I'm here and, you know, I'm at this place now, I'm going to start taking great pictures. But I think you then sort of put pressure on yourself. And I think as soon as, as, soon as that happens as a photographer, you, you don't see anything. You sort of, you get there and, you know, it might not be, the weather might not be great on the first day. And then all of a sudden you kind of get a bit despondent. So I try not to just, you know, I try not to put any pressure on myself other other than if it's a commission, there's natural natural um, pressure. But if it's just me going to a, a different place or country with with my camera, I'll I'll just I'll kind of just have a holiday or just go and just continue you know doing what I would normally do, like I'm in Melbourne, but have my camera with me. And then slowly, you know, you start seeing things. But I think when you if you kind of get there and you're like, all right, I'm going to get to this spot and this spot and this spot, and that's today, and then tomorrow I'm doing this, this, and this. It's it, it for me. It doesn't feel right. So that's that's how I work. But everyone's different, and you know, I think it's it's finding what what sort of works for you as a person and sort of helps you know works with your own approach. So um, yeah, I think it's just it's good to establish that and find what you know how you work best. You know, in a new place. Yeah, for sure. Well, would you say you have any, um, I like to call them eye magnets in the urban environment? Yeah, definitely. I've got, I mean, I've got, <clears throat> I've got, you know, several. And just from looking at the the, the picture here with the, the series of photos, you can see that I'm, I'm sort of drawn to graphics and strong colour and the colour yellow. Um, it's just one of those things that always, you know, visually it stops me in my tracks when I'm out there. When I'm out there on the street, if I see yellow, I kind of start looking at, you know, compositional possibilities and um, and then, you know, other things like for me, the Wounded series was was something that um, was obviously a magnet, you know, for two years. And then after that and one of the, the next ones that I suppose I've been drawn to is, is workers and, you know, it's usually men in, in high vis and whenever I <clears throat> come across them, out on the street, I, you know, stop the car. Well, if, you know, I've got time to stop the car, I get out and try to sort of look at the potential and, and see if there's some sort of uh, possibility with it. So I suppose they're my main ones, strong colour, graphics, line, shape, um, you know, the decisive moment, um, workers. Yeah, it's just a kind of a combination of that. And then when it all, occasionally it all kind of comes together in one frame and then that's when you know, you, you get the pictures. So it's just yeah. finding those moments. We, um, I think you coined the phrase, was it fishing or following? <laughs> Would you say you're a fish, following. more of a I fisher? Mean, it was following, wasn't it? Yeah, fishing, following. I mean, yeah, I'm probably a bit of both, like a bit of both. Um, looking at that, 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 that group of pictures there, there's a bit, bit of uh, probably fishing in a bit of that. There's, you know... The, the one with the woman with the orange hat, the, that was a bit of um, pretending to wait, wait for a tram next to her. But essentially, yeah, trying to kind of combine a few different, I'm just going to go back through a few and just, you know, that's me just standing at the queue at, at Officeworks waiting to pick up something and, and um, you know, just, just watching these guys sort of put this outdoor pickup zone together. But, um, yeah, I kind of combine a few different approaches when I'm out there and, and, and try to keep an open mind, like, and not be too set in my ways with this one approach. Um, mm. I think if you do that, you, you're going to have pictures that are, are pretty narrow in their, in their um, approach. So, yeah, just um, this is, you know, stopping and, and, and seeing that light and then just waiting. So that's the, the fishing, fishing technique, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, co- combination. Of different approaches amazing going back through a few of those yeah um yeah <laughs> wow um that's all the questions that we've got jesse um i've, I've got one last question about yeah. 
of the book. So, will there be pre-sales? Yeah, or? I'm doing. Yeah, I'm doing a. I'm doing the the big pre-sale thing that um, all photographers do these days. So I'm going to announce that later, uh, sort of mid mid November. So I'll be doing a, a pre-sale of the book, and I'll yeah make sure you've um, you've already got one. Yeah, I think you've got the fir first copy. So. You've got number one of of uh, one of a hundred of the limited editions, so that's that's got your name on it. But um, yeah, I'll just um, announce that I think in November, mid, mid November. Great, lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jesse, from all the members. Thank you. Here. I just want to thank you so much for your time, um, okay. and it's back to you, Russell. Thank, thank you very much, Susan, and thank you for Jesse. Um, that's all right. Actually, Thank wonderful you. presentation, the brilliant images. There was one question that slipped through, and it was yeah. from Nanda, um, just asking for um, a question about the early, the black and white shots you were doing there. What sort of film were you using for those? So the black and white work. Yeah. Um, that was well, yeah. So the the photography school that I, you know, bulk loaded the two thousand rolls of film from was um, it was all uh, T Max four hundred. So it was all that one same film for. Yeah, I think for seven or eight years is all I used across a few different bodies of work. And like I said earlier, once I kind of get onto a, a certain look or a certain, you know, film or certain camera or certain format, I, I stick to it. And I, I don't like kind of, you know, mixing and matching halfway through a body of work. So, um, yeah, T-Max 400. Thank you very much. And uh, I've got a couple of short yeah. questions. I won't keep you too long and I'll turn you on, but some... Um, in the past, you've hinted on doing a second edition of Don't Just Tell yes. Them. Is that, is that a possibility or are you just teasing everybody? No, I'm going to do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to do it next year. Um, I've got, yeah, so I've got this new book coming out, the black and white stuff, and then I'm going to do a, um, a book of the old graffiti photos next year as well. So I think, yeah, this period of, of COVID has been a really good, productive time for me to sort of go back through old work and kind of, you know, projects that I've, I've had on on the sort of back burner for a number of years and, and look at sort of, you know, turning them into books. So, um, yeah, and the second edition of the um, Don't Just Tell Them is on that list. So I'm probably going to do that hopefully middle of next year is the aim. Um, yeah, awesome. which will probably be the end of the end of next year, I reckon, <laughs> the way the way 2020 and early 2021 will be going. So, yeah, I think the end of next year. Awesome. And, um, and you, I think Sue touched on this before. One of the um, reasons for doing this series is to um, get people motivated. That, and I know you have a workshop coming up on the 4th for the Lycra KB. Do you want to give that a bit of a plug? Oh, the, that's an online one, yeah. So, yeah, online. Um, yeah that's on the, the 4th of... Uh, 4th of November next week. Are you still so, registered um, for that, I take it? Say again? You can still register for that. Yeah, I think there's, yeah, there's still um, places open for that. So it'll be, it'll be a similar kind of presentation, um, but then there'll be probably a bit more kind of, you know, in-depth discussion about, you know, composition and, and um, particular sort of, you know, approaches within, you know, I haven't really touched on too much of it tonight, but um, showing more of the proof sheets of, of the, the, some of the pictures and just going through the, the compositional, you know, reasons certain pictures were chosen. So that's, yeah, and just some of the other principles that, that I kind of work with with my work. But um, yeah, it's another online webinar. So looking forward to doing some more in-person ones in um, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more enjoyable than the, the webinars, which can be a bit, you know, bit hard sometimes but um so yeah we'll do that next week well thanks for that well i don't know there you go this is a perfectly timed workshop if you want to get back out there get some motivation to get back out onto the streets so i'd be lucky that Cheers. i'd just like to say on behalf of all the aspie members i'd like to thank you for your time and your presentation for tonight pleasure thank you okay thank you thanks, Thanks, and if you'd like to view more of Jesse's work, you can check out his website at jessemarlow.com or his Insta feed at Jesse Marlow. Um, if you remember, you should have received our newsletter by now, the latest news about what is happening in our community. Some interviews and links to a bunch of good stuff to keep you up to date with what's going on and some inspiration to get you back out onto the streets. So check that out. And just finally, I'd like to uh, mention on the 10th of November, that's in a few weeks, we have our next guest presenter, Mario Mirabal. So this will be the last in the series for 2020. So 
that's one to look forward to. So you can put that one in your diary. Um, that's all we have tonight. So um, thank you very much, everybody, and stay safe. Good night. All right. See you guys. Thank you.